All right, we got uh, Slammiversary. They showed up at the end of the show. Obviously, they've signed with TNA. They announced it at the beginning of the show. Impact, not TNA. Impact. Anymore. Well, there's a TNA title, but yes, they are Impact Wrestling. Yeah, they they showed up. Eric Young, EC3, um, and Saban and Shelley, which I didn't know were, were going to be there. Well, what did you think of this show? Um, you know, it's empty arena, so it's tough. I like the last match. Um, I thought everyone in the last match looked good in, 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 in a different way. They were very crisp. I thought the, the wrestlers in the last match were far away a different level from the wrestlers in, in most of the other matches. Um, as far as, I mean, you know, Saban and Shelley are a great team and they actually did well with the opening match was, was good. Uh, some of the other matches were, you know, I didn't really care for Moose and Dreamer. That kind of a match. You know, it's basically a, a, an ECW very weapons match, kind of slow. When there's no fans and you're doing thumbtacks and things like that, I, I don't feel like it works at all. So, you know, and the women's gauntlet match, I thought, was not good at all. Not good at all. Um, you know, some of the matches were okay. Chris Bay and Willie Mack was fine. Um, but I really liked the main event. Um, you know, Rich, Rich Swan is, you know, so charismatic and such a good worker and um you know he was where eric young you know for a lot of people who were disappointed eric young ended up being like the the well there, there were two added guys in the match um you know one was rich swan and one was eric young and of course there were ace austin eddie edwards and um trey miguel trey miguel looked great ace austin is really freaking good um, you know, he doesn't get, he doesn't get a lot of credit, uh, you know, because he's an impact, but he is really freaking good. And, um, Trey's a great, Trey's a great worker and, um, Eddie Edwards, solid, you know, solid, solid worker ended up winning the world title, but Eric Young, you know, after he's another one, you know, he's in WWE all those years and, you know, you don't, you for, you forget what a really good worker Eric Young is. And he's not, you know, I mean, he's in good shape and him and Rich Swan just were just, they were awesome. So, you know, I guess that would be my thought is really good main event and so, so rest of the card. Well, we had the Motors and Machine Guns debuting. They beat the Rascals in the main event. Saban and Shelley looked great. Actually, everyone in this match looked really good. Yeah, it was a good match. Yep. AC, or ASCH Rush is the name of the move. They hit that on Xavier, got the win. And really, really liked uh, Shelley in particular. Yes, he. In some ways, he's actually better than he's ever been. He's he's not as young as he used to be, but he's always been good. He's. I mean, I, 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 I But yeah, I, I, I could see where you're coming from. I was very impressed with him, but I've been impressed with him ever since he made this last comeback. He, he's got a very unique style, and that's always a good thing. And he's good at it, and. Um, I don't think Saban, you know, Saban's had a lot of knee problems. I mean, I thought Chris Saban used to be a great, great wrestler, and he was good tonight, but I, I would not say that, like, Chris Saban was at the level that, that he used to be. He didn't have the speed and everything like that, but he's, but they're a great team, and, um, you know, Wentz and Xavier are, are a very good team, too. So, yeah, a good opening match. We had the TNA World Champion Moose beat Tommy Dreamer. It was an old-school rules match. Which, if you don't watch Impact, it sounds like they would be doing a classic wrestling match. But old school rules is basically, it was an ECW match. And they hit each other with stuff. Moose suplexed him on the stage. There were thumbtacks. Moose is, is trying to shove Dreamer's face into the thumbtacks near the Should end. He drove his eye into the thumbtacks, which is like, so, you know, whatever. So... I mean, it's like, it's like, I know that that's like what, what Dusty Rhodes and Terry Funk would have done, but that's Dusty Rhodes and Terry Funk in like a blood feud in the main event. And this is the second match on the show. And it, and there's, you know, and, and again, if you're trying to shove someone's eye and the fans are screaming and everything, which is like the object, it's one thing, but like for an empty arena, it just felt like this just didn't work at all. So he's trying to shove his face into the thumbtacks, and I can't remember what exactly he said, but it was something like, I never watched ECW. And of course, this is spinach for Tommy Dreamer. He fires up, and he starts making his big comeback, but then Moose rakes his eyes, slams Dreamer onto the tacks, hits the spear, and gets the pin. I thought Moose looked good in this match. 
He was just a good athlete. I I just didn't think, I didn't like them. I, it wasn't like um, it wasn't that I didn't like Moose, but I didn't like the style of the match. I just felt like with with no fans, I just felt the match didn't work. Speaking of no fans, we had the knockouts gauntlet match to determine number one contender, which was ultimately won by Kylie Ray. And there was so much wacky comedy in this match. And the thing that I've noticed, and it's like it affects Orange Cassidy to one degree, but it affects something like this to a totally different degree. Comedy and wrestling, when there's no fans, doesn't work. Dies. It doesn't work. It's like the a stand-up th- comedian with no audience. Yeah. You're okay, out there but- telling jokes. There's no reaction. It's not funny. It's painful. But the other thing here is is that... Um, there was very bad wrestling. The wrestling wasn't good. And, and with no fans, bad wrestling with no fans is like worse wrestling. Because you don't have the fans covering up for it. And Kylie Ray is, 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 a, is really good. But... Because of, you know, and, and some of the other women are good too, but there were enough that weren't that it really took the match down. And like, like I'm watching Kylie Ray and it's just like, I can tell by, you know, she's good, but compared to like everything that I've seen of Kylie Ray in Impact or in AEW or in Indies that I saw before, I mean, like, she, she kind of, you know, she's a good athlete and, and she stands out and she feels like a star. And Taya, Taya has that star power. But watching this match, it was just, it just felt like nobody was a star and the match was just bad. And then Johnny Bravo, you know, coming in twice, just dragged it down both times. And it was one of those matches where it went like 20 minutes because it's like a Royal Rumble. And, and it's like you, after a couple of minutes, it was just kind of like, you know, we almost couldn't wait for it to end. You know, I guess the story was, um, Kylie Ray ran the gauntlet from, you know, first person in and last person out type of thing, right? Yep. She started number one. Final four were Kimber Lee, Taya, Rosemary, and Kylie. And Ray eliminated Lee. And then Ty eliminated Rosemary, so it came down to Kylie and Taya, one on one match with pinfalls. And Ray she hit pinned a her right away. Destroyer super kick and got the pin. So she is the number one contender for the title. We had Heath Miller, the former Heath Slater, coming out. I think they just call him Heath. He was just Heath. Yeah, and that's... he gets in the ring and he cuts his promo. And he says that he was planning to challenge the Rascals earlier, but he he was late for his big debut. Well, well here. they 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 explained it when when it came in. He he came out for the open because the Rascals match with Saban and Shelley was an open challenge. So he wanted to get a partner to challenge the Rascals, not realizing that it was Central Time and the match had already taken place. Which he flew there. How did he not know it was Central Time? I mean, come on, it ridiculous. Was attempt, it was an attempt at comedy. And you know what? I mean, it's like, he's fine, but it felt, I don't know. Well, part of the problem was the the, the microphone was like all mic- messed up, and so it was only going over the speakers in the building. It wasn't being piped directly in his audio, so it just sounded low rent like an indie show. And he came off as a 50-time bigger star on Raw when he was doing the deal with Drew McIntyre, that promo. I mean, this was fine, but the the mic hurt, and then the Rohit Raju segment, he just came out and attacked him, and uh, Heath actually hit a zigzag and laid him out. Yeah, it's like Russian and leg sweep. The thing, was that? The, thing, the thing to me is, I mean, we knew they were going to bring in a bunch of WWE guys who had been fired, and, and you know, they had already teased uh, him, because Rhino had done promos on the show that he's bringing in his a tag team partner who who's got kids so you knew you knew he was coming in but i watching the show i felt he was uh like one too many and also it's just weird i think it i think like when like there's there's guys like ec3 okay ec3 wasn't used at all in wwe which when it comes to coming back here is a good thing 
he's just like a guy who's been gone that no one's seen so he's like a you know like a fresh character gals and anderson were you know the last that they were used um that people remember was in in you know the top match at wrestlemania and they've been getting a lot of buzz and everything for coming in but heath was a guy who was never ever ever pushed and then to bring a guy like that in and then to try to make him out to be a big star, it just makes your company look second rate, I think. And I just, um, I mean, I, it's like bringing in so many of those guys on this at the same time. I mean, I, granted, you could say the same thing with Eric Young, but they pretty much have taken Eric Young off television too. Um, you know, so whatever. But, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, they didn't push Eric Young at all in WWE. But, um, but like, yeah, I mean, he hadn't been, he, nobody'd seen Eric Young in so long that it's just, oh, Eric Young disappeared and now he's back, you know, whereas he has been around and just, you know, not used well at all. And, and for years, I mean, for years and years and years. Um, so it's kind of like if you push him, you're basically saying that you're, you're second rate. I mean, I guess for impact, it's okay because, there's no, um, like when you watch Impact, there's no, um, you know, like illusion that you're watching the number one wrestling company in the world. You're just watching a wrestling company that's that's there. Um, if you were like, um, you know, watching a company that says that they're better, you know, like it's New Japan or whatever, and then, you know, but I mean, you, New Japan could push anyone they want if the guy's good, but I don't know. It just felt like we, I, I didn't feel it with him i kind of felt like um i don't know I, 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 I couldn't i couldn't push him the other thing is he was like twice the size of of uh rohit raju when they were doing the thing which is whatever he just is we had chris bay willie mack for the x division title I like this match a lot. Chris Bay is a great athlete. Willie Mack, I've always been a huge fan of. Does not look like he should be a great athlete, but he actually is. And just had a fun match. All sorts of big it's spots. Good. Mack tried the six-star frog splash. Bay avoided it. And then the big spot at the end, Mack hit the stunner. Went for the six-star again. Bay pushed the referee. The referee's distracted. He rakes the eyes of Willie Mack. And he hits his final finesse, gets the pin, wins the X Division title, and there you go. Yeah, I, I, I thought this was a good match. Um, you know, yeah, Bay's, Bay's good. Willie Max always gives you a good performance, always works hard. Yeah. We had the Heath Rhino segment backstage. Scott Demore walks up and says, listen, we're in a pandemic. It's a closed set. You can't just show up, dude. So you got to go. And he kicks him out. And then Rhino tells him, show up on Tuesday and we'll figure this out. So he'll be at the next set of tapings. Well, the TV's on Tuesday, yeah. We have the North versus Ken Shamrock and Sammy Callahan for the Impact World Titles. I thought Ethan Page, Josh Alexander, Sammy Callahan, all really good. And then there was Ken Shamrock. God bless the guy. He can move. He looked completely lost for about half the spots in this match. And he took it down a lot. He had like one good spot early where he was doing some grappling with Josh Alexander, which was good. He tried one dive at the end and nobody was there. He just crashed on the ground and almost killed himself. He, he, he did a really cool overhead suplex on, um, I think it was Josh outside the ring. But um, yeah, I, I think he's 56 years old. You know, I mean, that's that's... That that's just the reality. He's fifty six years old. But um the North's a really good team. I mean, like I was I was I was very impressed. I and I've always been. Um they're they're good. And 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 I thought the match was good because of them. Um and when Sammy Callahan was in it was good. When Ken was in, you know, it was they were good enough to where it wasn't too bad you know, it was all right, uh, when he was in, but he you know, it definitely was not um you know, not at the, you know, he was not at the level of the other three. So he accidentally kicked Callahan. They'd had some problems during the match, accidentally hitting each other. And then he had a top row belly to belly on Alexander. 
went for this big dive on the outside. They just moved out of the way, so he crashed and burned. And then they threw him into the ring, and they hit their finish, and they got the pin, retained the titles. Then we had Ethan Page doing a promo, basically saying that they've been here for a year, they've destroyed everybody, they proved they're the greatest tag team in Impact history. Motor City Machine Guns come out. Everybody expected Gallows and Anderson to come out on this spot. But it was, in fact, the Machine Guns, and Saban noted that The Office had granted them the next tag team title shot this coming Tuesday, so... That's going to be the next title match. That'd actually be a really good match. Oh, yeah. So, Deanna Parazzo beat Jordan Grace to win the knockouts title. And I thought this match was really good. Uh, did you? Yeah. I, 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 I mean, a lot of people did. A lot of people did. I, I don't know. It didn't, it didn't do it for me. It, it was, I, I mean, I thought it was fine. But I just thought that the caliber of everything just wasn't. Um, it was okay. It was just to me. It was like it wasn't that that smooth or anything like that. I mean, they did some. Deanna Prozzo did some cool grappling, and and um, you know Jordan Grace was fine. But I it never, I don't know, never really grabbed me. Um, and I think it went too long. They pounded on each other. Deanna kept trying to go for the Fujiwara armbar. And finally, Jordan tried the Grace Driver. Brazzo block, block, block. And then finally got her in a double arm bar. So after work, cool working finish. for the Fujiwara arm bar, she basically put her, put her in a uh, uh, double arm bar. I don't even know what you call it. But double she, arm bar. It was a double arm bar. That's what I would call it. I mean, it, uh, it'd be sort of like a, a full Nelson with the arms straight, basically. But anyway, she got the move. Jordan Grace submitted verbally because she couldn't tap. And there you go. New champion. Yeah, so Deanna Parazzo and Kylie Ray's the, the next program. They announced Bound for Glory October 24th, and then we had the main that, event. That's, that's my that's my birthday. I don't want to watch that show. Wow. I do not want to watch that show. Not, anyway. Well, we'll see what happens. On yeah, October twenty well, I mean, fourth, Dave. I, I may not have. I may not have a choice. I may not be able to go anywhere anyway. So first, they bring out Rich Swan as the mystery fourth person in the match, and everyone stands in the well, ring. The thing is, is they'd already, they'd actually done a segment earlier where they were looking for Gallows and Anderson, um, and they opened up the dressing room door for Gallows and Anderson. Actually, they did something earlier, which actually was kind of cute. Johnny Swinger, uh, they were waiting for Gallows and Anderson the whole show. Okay, so um, Johnny Swinger arrives in this um, Jaguar, as a matter of fact, and they go, Johnny Swinger, how did you get this Jaguar? And he goes, I went to the rental car place, and they had it for some guy named Anderson, and I looked around, and Ole was nowhere to be found, because Johnny Swinger does this gimmick where he's caught in, like, the 80s, and he's actually really good at it, it's, 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 and so, so, he, so that was the, the first Gallows and Anderson segment. The second one, they go to the dressing room with Gallows and Anderson, but Rich Swan comes out on crutches and just kind of talks about how, you know, I'll be back soon, you know. So it says like a, it was a swerve because he's actually healed. So he came out with his crutches and then threw him away, and he did all kinds of high flying moves. So he's in fact healed. Well, it was double swerve because he comes out for the fourth guy, and then right before the match starts, a fifth guy comes out, and it's Eric Young, and it's now a five way, which a long time ago. This was originally going to be a five-way. Right, with um, Tessa Blanchard and Michael Elgin. Yep. So Eric Young got busted open early. I can't remember the spot, but something happened, and he, I think he bonked heads with somebody, and he's bleeding all over by the eye. He, 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 um, he, was, he had two cuts. He had, he had the one cut that was there early, and then he had a second cut over the, over the left eye later. No, so, wait, 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 no, over the right eye. The, the, the first one was, over the, was the side of the left eye, and then the, the second cut was over the right eye. So Trey and Austin are going after each other from the opening bell, but they keep getting separated. That's obviously a... This is their version of MJF and Jungle Boy, I'm sure. They're going to be feuding forever, two young guys. And Young ended up hitting the pile driver, pinned Trey, so he was out of there. Eddie then went to Superplex Ace, and they had this big spot where Swan went running, and Ace and Eddie flew off the 
top turnbuckle through the announce table, and so they're on the floor dead. So, bunch of spots in the ring. Young goes to give Swan the pile driver. Swan reverses, rolls up Eric Young, and pins him. So, of course, Eric Young had been talking trash to Rich Swan, saying, you know, you were the you were the letdown surprise, but I was the main event surprise, something of that nature. So, of course, then Rich pins him. So he's furious, and so he destroys Rich Swan's knee. He clips him, he pilmanizes the leg multiple times, he just totally destroys this guy's leg. And then finally they get him out of here, and, you know, Rich Swan won't, quick, uh, won't quit. So Ace comes back and tries a couple of cradles, but then he chop blocks the leg, hits his finish, the fold, and he eliminates Rich Swan. This was like the best thing in the whole match. The whole Eric Young, Rich Swan uh, leg I just gimmick. Liked it. I just liked the whole, I liked everything in the match. I thought the match might have gone about two minutes too long, but all those guys were, were um, they're so crisp. I mean, that's what, that's the one thing is like, they were so crisp and, um, like and such you know you know their timing was good their work was so good you know like i said just stood out from everybody on the show and and um you know especially like i i my, my, i mean my favorite guys were rich swan and eric young though as far as eric uh, young is an incredible worker he's yep, been an he, he gets, incredible he, worker since the early 2000s he gets no credit though or little credit. i gave I him mean, credit for years yeah he's a great worker um, I remember when he was in um, NXT, and I thought he was like a great worker. But, you know, it was one of those things where he's never going to get a push in WWE. And, and he never did, um, no matter what. And, I mean, and he's, he's a good character, too. But um, so hopefully they, they do something with him because, yeah, he, he, you know, he was really good in this match. Came down to Ace and Eddie. They kicked out of a bunch of finishes. And then finally, Eddie hit the Die Hard Flosion. Pinned him, won the title, he's the new champion, and then, like, immediately upon celebrating, he's attacked by Madman Fulton, and Gallows and Anderson, the good brothers, make the save, and they lay everybody out, they have a beer bash with Eddie, and in the last 30 seconds, they cut to a video of the returning EC3 throwing a glass at a wall, so he is back. It looked like he's going to be playing like a psycho character. That's how I kind of read it anyway. You know, not the same. It was definitely not the same EC3 that was there, um, you know, years ago. 